Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2023-24 full-time and transition year academy programs briefing. Please welcome Director of Rugby and Head of Player Pathways, Dan Funsale, Head of Performance Analysis, the great Joe Walsh, and some big bloke called Joe Shep. Welcome. Hello, <laughs> Thank you. How are you, you keeping? Yeah, good. Listen, you don't need to be paying me more to give you introductions like that. You really <laughs> well, well, first time. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm cheap. Right, on tonight's show, welcome, 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 first of all, to all of the parents and the students who have already applied. Different stages are going through the application process, and we are going live out to the community tonight across a number of different platforms to share, <clears throat> excuse me, the whole process of joining the Academy for our flagship eight-month full-time programme, whether you're an international student, and we'll come on to how that works, and if you're a transition student, and Dan, as Director of Rugby, and player pathways runs all the programs and joe is head of performance analysis and video execution looks at those and going to talk us all the way through it so there's lots tonight for people who are already in the process and if you want to join we're going to explain it all step by step keep it here because this is what you or your little cherub could be doing next <laughs> Oh, I love that. That is going from as is to will be. So that's what's going to happen. We're just going to be in a slightly different location. Uh, right, I'm going to start straight in tonight. But before we do, our good friends at South Wales Lost the Rugby Supporters Club have fab show, lads. Looking well. Thanks, lads. And excellent to be part of your uh, gig last night. If you haven't seen that, I'll give a quick shout out for it. We did a cardiac awareness uh, live last night, which was very, very good. And um, uh, go and watch it, please, because it is well worth it. And um, yeah, brilliant, lads, last night. There we go. So, right, this is it. Director of Rugby and Head of Pathways, Dan Fonsale, Head of Performance Analysis, Joe Walsh. Welcome, lads. Let's get into it. So, Dan, full-time programme. Uh, we get off, we get asked, don't we, uh, a lot, what's the difference between the full-time and transition year programmes? They're the same. they both full-time. Uh, so, they both eight months of the year, September to end of, no, end of April. Uh, the only difference is with the transition year students, they, because of their age, some, some is only 15 or 16. There's some courses that they still not, um, like the IRFU coaching course, they can be assistant coach, but they can't be a head coach and, and that sort of thing until they're 16 years of age or 18 years of age. Um, and then the biggest other one is that they with us Monday to Friday, and they play for their local clubs then on Saturday, Sunday, where the full-time students, they with us for seven days of the week, and they play for a club of choice once they once they side in Ireland. Cool. And we've got a, a part-time course, haven't we? So one week to four months, and a big shout-out. Yes, out that's the, uh, yeah, the, part-time, the part-time course uh, for the TY students is either during – midterms or whatever whenever they get off school uh, also we have a friday ty day which is specifically towards uh, geared towards ty students um, and then the full timers we also in three terms there where they can come in for three months six months or or eight months depending the time of year like southern hemisphere people some uh, the school year finishes in december so they, there's quite a few of them then that join us from January on to April. And then the same with the USA during fall. A lot of uh, guys will join us from September to December. So it, it depends on when the availabilities are there. We also get people in from uh, uh, the South American countries where they their school year finishes in again in November and then varsity or, or so on start or new school year starts in March and rugby season starts in March. So we get them for a two month period. So um, basically our program is from one week to eight months, wherever you can fit it in with a main um, program being the eight month program. 
Brilliant. And a good shout out tonight to our good friend in uh, South America, in Argentina, Fernando Alcaraz from Alcaraz Sports, who we know is watching tonight and he has some of his uh, potential students watching and still learn as well. Fernando, you're always welcome, my friends. Okay, so uh, Academy updates. Dan, where are we currently with the Academy? Well, Yoa now MD has been very busy during this time to get the the new location and everything sorted. Um, also, looking behind the scenes, that that everything will be will be perfect for the for the newcomers. Um, so it's been quite a busy time. We obviously just returned from Austria as well, uh, where we were at the United World Games, had a very successful uh, tournament there with a girls under eighteen team. Uh, we busy our summer programs are starting on Sunday. Uh, we've got five summer pro five weeks uh, during the summer, uh, geared again from people coming in from from all over the world. Um, we've uh, bought over PSA academies to sort of be a, a they a junior academy, ten to sixteen year olds uh, that then can can come into our pathway from sixteen to to 22 or 23 year old so it's been a busy time in that sense uh joe and myself have been working on individual pathways where we want to create an individual program for for players um we're trying with your help to come up with a season calendar because everything is is getting so busy that we need to plan a year two years ahead almost um this afternoon, been contacted by Uruguay. Actually, they want us to go and do some camps over there. So, we we now in the overseas market as well to go and do camps and and then locally and abroad. Uh, we're starting a new education up um, and so on. So it's been really really busy times. It doesn't seem like it's been a been a off season, but now we're actually getting to the crux of it. You know, with summer program and then obviously what we're all about is the main academy program starting in in september absolutely no brilliant update mate and congratulations on to uh, to all the girls in the under 18s have got a silver medal uh, runners up representing ireland in the united world games in austria uh great uh, great result uh, yourself johanna across there with the uh, great alison miller uh, coaching, uh, Irish legend uh, and barbarian legend coaching, um, and took us away a silver medal. So well done to all of those. Right, <clears throat> Dan and Joe, there's two parts to the academy: the individual rugby development and the learning pathway program. A the learning pathway program bespoke range of globally accredited courses that they can achieve at more. Tell us about why it's a twin track approach, Dan. Look, it's something that I think is really important, you know, for for players. We all know that rugby can can change tomorrow, you know, with an injury or or perception about you and your your path is changed. So we feel very strong about a learning pathway program to have that as part of the academy. In saying that, we always said we don't want to be education with rugby. We want to be a rugby academy with education. Um, and but every year the education modules, uh, you know, we get asked to to do a little bit of this or a little bit of that. So we feel very proud of the learning pathway program that we have at the moment, over a wide spectrum of things. But uh, the main thing about our uh, program is still the individual rugby development, where we concentrate on individual skills. Um, we are. As you know, we're not a team, but all the players will play for different clubs within Ireland. Uh, but day-to-day -day academy, we work on their individual skills, whether that's on the pitch or off the pitch through workshops and video analysis and all of that. Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and again, the Learn the Pathway programs for, for students who, uh, male and female athletes aspiring to get a place within a professional rugby setup and many of them have gone on to success whether it's the Irish Sevens team or playing in the MLR or in New Zealand or, uh, or Holland and France and everywhere really but <clears throat> what really stands out in their CV after eight months is they can qualify as a personal fitness trainer 
as a strength and conditioning coach, video analyst, certificate in sports psychology. I mean, 17, 18 years of age, we've got youngsters who have been through, who, who are getting paid now good money. They're working hard as personal fitness trainers. That's yeah. fat on your CV. I mean, I just, just, just this afternoon, I had a chat to an ex-graduate that's not 18 oh. yet, but he's already working half five in the morning till three in the afternoon in a gym where he's personal trainer and he's paying back his investment that he made to come into the academy. It's almost, you know, he's, he's getting that back now in return uh, from earning money from, from it. So, so I think even in that sense, you know, you're employable straight away coming out of the academy and that's, that's what we're trying to do, whether that's through video analysis, whether that's through personal trainer, coaching um, or any of those aspects. So we, we're really trying to, to make it uh, viable for the player that if he doesn't make it in rugby, we all have a certain standard that we think uh, we are. But if, if you're not good enough in that sense, then there's other ways to stay in the game. And that's what we want to offer. Cool. Brilliant. So... <clears throat> while they're here, because we're still writing the program as, as we speak, along with a whole pile of other things, but generically each day of the week in the program, they do four things, don't they? So rugby training, take us through that. The rugby training will be, um, they. if I start off with, with uh, a Monday, a Monday will always be individual skill. Mostly they play on Saturdays or Sundays for their, for their local club teams. So we'll have an individual skill session uh, uh, on a Monday, which will include either uh, catch and pass. It it might be a little bit of, of evasion. Um, and then there'll be a pitch session as well after that, um, where the group together will, will train. Um, and then they'll have club training in the evenings on Tuesday and Thursday night. So during the week, there's probably three individual sessions where players uh, train them themselves on the advice that we've given them. And then there'll be a pitch session every day. And then there'll be uh, the sessions that they have with their clubs. So it's it's probably around 10, 10 rugby sessions a week uh, that they'll have, plus, plus then a game that they'll play. Brilliant. Strength and conditioning as well? Yeah, strength and conditioning is on the same basis, uh, you know, depending the the experience that the players have coming into the gym. Uh, some will be more experienced than others, but the components that we're looking after there is strength, power, speed, agility and quickness. And then we also do a lot of hand-eye coordination as part of the of our gym training, uh, which also helps them then with their, with their skill development. Brilliant. <coughs> I've got to say, as we are going through this, there is one small mistake on one slide. And in fairness, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, if somebody spots what the small mistake is on one of the slides, then I will give them two two bags of Chef's Blend coffee from coffee. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. Just so I get out of the way, so nobody says, oh, made a mistake there, Mr. Perfect. There we go. Education, another key aspect. Yeah, and, and again, we... PS College is a new partner of us coming coming on board to to run our education part or our iTech trainer qualification, uh, but the education part is a is a huge part through the personal trainer through the strength and conditioning that we do. We do a sports psychology diploma, uh, SAC speed agility quickness. You know that uh, we do both for athlete and and for coach that the. The athletes can also become coaches during maybe summer camps or so on, where they can again uh, earn from it. Speed development, which is huge. You know, you think you've got to be quick, but it's just uh, running mechanics, getting off the line defensively in rugby. It's so important uh, these days. So, all the aspects about st speed development, about start, about running, about changing direction. All of those aspects on a weekly basis, uh, there'll be a speed development session. Uh, Next sports, we've got the guru in the room tonight who, who runs the whole analysis uh, aspect of it. And then also they do the youth coaching award through the Irish Rugby Football Union. We do safe rugby, um, which is very important based on and 
part of that was in your um, session last night. And then also referee qualification, uh, whether that's affiliate referees or if there's players that, that want to pursue that further, we, we give them the option. So there's a huge range of different education modules that, that we do. <coughs> and I just wanted to add in there that whilst we're talking about them being able to earn money straight away, some of these other areas and sports management and sports administration we're pushing as well. Say pushing, we're, we're opening the, the mind to the parents and to the students that actually there's a whole range of... Oh, what's, 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 very, what's, very, what's very evident now, as I said, we... we we're taking over PSA academies, junior academies, and then obviously the Rugby Academy Island camps. But for the first time now, we've got ex RII, RII uh, graduates that's coming to work on these camps, either as an administrator or running the social media or or being a coach or being a supervisor. So, and all of that is from the experience that they've gained through throughout the program as well. <coughs> and again. I think it's just really worth saying that the whole concept of the global calendar, the global uh, annual calendar uh, for us is that we've got a pre-package for these individual pathway uh, programs that yourself and Joe are developing from 10 to 13, which then puts them on the path. So when they get to 13 onwards, they then come back, they get an individual pathway, they come through a number of our programs and courses, end up on our full-time program. They say, we spoke eight months one, get the qualifications, go out into the world, in either sports administration, sports management, or to T123 rugby clubs, they've got all these qualifications. They then come back in to the fold again by doing the high performance coaching development stuff. So, it, and that 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 alumni we're trying to create is a literally a cradle to grave scenario. Yeah, no, and just just last week I had a conversation with a guy that was one of our very first intakes six years ago. You know, and we have that constant uh, relationship you know, finding out where they are, what they're doing. Everybody's not still involved in rugby, but just like we finding out about um, things for certain players, a big part of our program as well is to find out is professional rugby what they want to do or not. And, you know, I think that is a huge aspect that we sometimes don't talk about um, because everybody thinks it's, it's glamorous, glamorous and all the good things, but it takes a lot of sacrifice and hard work. And we provide the opportunity for them to decide in the year, you know, is it what I want or is it not what I want? Cool. Personal life development, the fourth aspect of what they'll do on a weekly basis. Again, a variation of things. Uh, you play your part definitely in this as well, you know, in helping uh people uh, around media training and, and all of that, uh, but a very variety of classes around nutrition, which is a massive aspect of, of our, our program where guys cook for themselves. You know, there's a lot of academies out there. I, I almost want to say um, we one of very few or the only one where players cook for themselves, you know, where, we, we give them the guidance and they stay with us and under guiding hand, they cook cook for themselves. Most academies, they stay away from from where, uh, where they train and so on. So the nutrition aspect is huge. The cooking aspect, the mental program that we run, both in support and uh, for players to, to have it as a career. Um, career guidance, uh, as you've got on there, Again, you know, different players, the maturity um, from when they come into our program and when they leave the program is massive. And it's great to see the players grow like that as, as, as human beings. Uh, leadership development, which is forms a huge part, again, around even things like captaincy, but also, you know, you live with people that... Uh, you live in the same same vicinity as as other people. One guy likes to keep his 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 clothes on the floor. Another guy is very meticulous in how he wants. And you know, people learn a lot about themselves in that aspect and how to treat each other. And then 
the social media aspect, the public speaking, the community work. We feel very strong about the community work and it's been a great success for us uh, in the NACE food bank where we packed um, packed food for the homeless and, and so on. And that also has got, you know, to see that effect that it has on the players is great. So, again, we try and be holistic around everything, give, give them as much to... Uh, to ponder about and to to work towards as as possible. Cool, brilliant. <clears throat> We're going to come on to Joe now, uh, but just before we do, Duncan Miguel again. We've got to give this man a shout out. Um, I'm actually picking him and the two of the students up on Sunday. Duncan, look forward to meeting you, mate. You're the top man. Um, love rugby, so let, uh, doesn't have a capital L. I asked there what was missing on the slides, and look, the heinous little L there. That, actually, that's not the one, Dunk. That's not the one, but I will. He's right you. though. He's right though. Yeah, I just I, I threw this together this afternoon, this presentation, <laughs> and uh, oh my word, I'll be angry with myself. I'll have to open another bottle of Malbec tonight, lads, to get through this. It's going to be Duncan. I'll bring you a large bag of of uh, Chef's Blend beans on Sunday, my friend, when I pick you up and meet you. But well spotted. But that wasn't the one of somebody else spotted. It's, this could cost me a lot of coffee tonight, couldn't it? There we go. Duncan McGilligan, you're a top man. Thanks very much. Uh, who else is on? Uh, Byron Brooker. Hey Dan, SA Lions player looking to get to Ireland to play rugby. Where can he apply? Well, the application process is through through our website and through our links that we have on, on our social media uh, channels. Um, to just come and play rugby, uh, you know, we're not in the agent market. So we help players in their career pathways. Once they've been with us, then we we look to for them to go to pro clubs or semi-pro clubs where we send them on a trial. Um, but we won't offer players contracts from, uh, you know, coming to us. We offer them a trial based on their ability and their character. Um, and that might be over in, we've had guys from Germany, Poland, France, Italy, MLR, staying over in Ireland, becoming a professional player in Ireland for amateur clubs. So um, we definitely... You know, South African players. We do get South African players every year on our on our course, and they form a big part of of our academy. Super. And uh, Byron's just come back. There, Byron. What I'll do is tomorrow morning, my friend, I'll uh, reach out to you uh, via this message, and I will send you some details, and then I will engage with you. And if we can do anything, then and just to say to Byron, uh, if it's the right Byron that that I think it is that his son can then stay over and play cricket in Ireland as well for the summer. There you go. Two for one. Always happy to help here at the Academy. And there we go. Got to give a shout out to uh, Danny, Danny Van Sale. So, uh, absolutely. We're, uh, <laughs> we're proud of them too, uh, Dan. Thanks for this. This man, your father, always shares everything that we do. Uh, and, it's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's brilliant, mate. And there you go, Byron. Everybody loves Dan Van Sale. Everybody loves Dan Van Sale. There we go. <laughs> he's, uh, he still thinks he's that young, good-looking scrum half. He still acts that way. But I've no, seen him. Not any he's, 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 he's slowing down. He's slowing down slightly. Right, let's move on. Uh, Dan, thanks very much for that. Uh, right, Joe, talk us through this. Yeah, so we thought we'd give a bit of an insight into a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the modules that we run. So, obviously... Uh, my main role at the academy is head of performance analysis. So probably the main responsibility for me is is to look after our NAC Sport module. So um, there's a rough run through of it there on the left, really. So it, it takes takes place across the first 14 weeks of the course. So depending on the schedule, it can run through to Christmas or or past Christmas. And um, really, it's it's about giving uh, a very applied understanding and an applied uh, experience of, of performance analysis. So. We speak a lot about you know the role of, of performance analysis in rugby and in sport in general and, and what it is and uh, also the role of the analysts. So as you work as an analyst, you know what's expected of you. What's your main roles and responsibilities? And um, we work on on KPIs or key performance indicators in rugby. So um, helping the players understand and, and this goes back to whether they go on to be a player or a coach or an analyst. Helping them understand how are statistics or KPIs applied in rugby? What are the KPIs that people look at? What are the stats people look at? And um, how can you quantify match performance? So we spend a good bit of time on that. And um, also, how do we produce review packages? So again, within the role of an analyst, how would you produce video packages for coaches, for 
if you're preparing to uh, uh, preparing for a player led lineup meeting, for example, how would you prepare a video package to show your team or show your coaches? And um, we're obviously partnered with Naxport as our software provider. So um, basically the vast majority of the work that we do around the analysis process takes place in, in our Naxport software. So we go really from, from A to Z um, in the application, you know, all the way from um, the basics of how to turn on the computer and open it all the way through to producing and um, professional level outputs and, and statistics and uh, analysis work. And then finally there, we, we work on working to briefs and tasks. So a lot of our assignments really uh, when we get to the end and what they'll be marked on and, and what will uh, contribute towards their their certificate uh, is being given a brief that could be given to them by an anal by another analyst, by a head coach, by a professional coach, um, and really asking them to put everything together in that pathway in terms of creating different ways to collect data, understanding how to collect information and present it back in, in packages that people can view. So it's really uh, looking at the analyst, the role of the analyst, how they're incorporated into the coaching process, how to use software, and how to understand statistics in the game. So it's really an all-encompassing module that, uh, you know, going back to what both of you have said so far, we've had multiple players come through the academy that are now working as analysts, either on their own or supporting other teams uh, in different countries around the world, some in Europe, some in South Africa, some in the States that are, are doing work um, essentially off the basis of the of the program that we've done. So it's it's really feeding into, um, yes, helping them understand the software and also, yes, understanding the statistics and the, the workings of rugby, but also giving them another career choice, another platform to work in inside rugby uh, if they're not playing. But Joe, I do think it's also the player improving himself, knowing what yes. coaches are looking for. Yeah, and it's something that we've sort of pushed, particularly in the last two or three years, um, is helping the guys understand how to review their own their own footage. So we would push for the guys that are here. And um, part of the the main criteria for the clubs that we that the players get placed with is that they that they supply their match footage. So we try and get all the the players' games with with club games recorded, and then you know myself or Dan will will analyze the games with them, but also that by the time they get even halfway through our module, through the analysis module, they should be able to break down their own games and give themselves feedback, produce clips that they can they can send to their coaches, either within the academy or in the club. Um, so it's, again, it, it's as, as Dan said, it's from the coach perspective, it's from the analyst perspective, but it's also then from the player's perspective of, of analyzing themselves and their own performance. So look, this one then, in terms of, yeah, so match analysis then, so this sort of, you know, it stems, uh, it stems into a little bit of the performance analysis pathway. So once we've sort of completed that 14 week program, uh, working all the way up from just looking at footage all the way through to, to producing um, statistics and information, we, we look a lot deeper then in terms of, of using real match footage from different levels of rugby. We'll look at schools rugby in Ireland. We'll look at um, interprovincial rugby, uh, inter, uh, professional club rugby, professional international rugby, um, and we'll use the knowledge in the room and try and push the players to uh, watch footage. So watch the attack of different teams, watch the defense of different teams, and break down what they're seeing in terms of, of their current understanding of the way that the game works, and um, work in groups to try and produce sort of actionable information on that. So, you know, there's an example there on the right, actually from two years ago, where we watched a, an Ireland versus Japan international match broke the players into into four different groups and, and asked all of them to look at different aspects of the game. So ask them to look at attack or defense, contact or set piece. And they're trying to pool their collective knowledge, but then also with with whether it be myself or Dan or whoever is leading it to then try and push and, and check for understanding and, and give a little bit of, of extra info as well and give them some extra detail. And um, so it really comes back to um, allowing them to look at games and, and help them to learn further about tracking their own position in games, tracking what they might be involved in in their own games and, and developing their understanding of, of, of the intricacies of rugby. So working the way down there, it's obviously deep dives on areas like attack and defense and set piece and, and really looking in detail at, at what those areas are comprised of and how they function. We look at individual player analysis. So we'll encourage obviously the players to watch as many matches as they can and to focus on the position that they'll play or, or likely will play. Um, but we'll do that collectively as well and focus on specific positional groups within games and we'll create action plans. That's one of the things the players really enjoy is, is when they're broken into those groups is we'll watch the first 40 minutes and then ask them to put a plan together on what they would change at halftime if they were a captain or a 
set piece leader or a coach. So what 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 decisions would they make at halftime to try and improve performance? So that really encapsulates a lot of leadership, decision making, analysis, rugby IQ. Um, and then obviously in, in tandem with that as well, and again, linking back to that analysis module, we'll ask them to collect and, and apply match statistics. So if they're watching that first 40 minutes and they're studying the attack, they'll try and measure passes and breakdowns and where the attack has went and the direction of the attack, and then use that to try and develop these action plans. So it's really a good a good way that we use really various uh, amounts and, and, and levels of footage to try and test the understanding and develop the, the technical understanding and the tactical understanding and of the players. And I would say I would say that's a massive part of our program, you know, from speaking especially to transition year students that's um, done the course, the game understanding aspect is the aspect that they've improved the most on. You know, what do you do off a certain scrum if you're in a certain position? What do you do during face play, all of those things to understand the game better. And that then makes you a better rugby player because you're two, three phases ahead of what mm -hmm. other players are thinking. And then it's also the, it helps you with the training age, you know, normal club player out there trains twice a week, plays on a, on a, on a weekend with this match analysis, club coaches don't have the time to do that because they, they've got a win on the weekend. So I think that's the big benefit of coming to the academy is your game understanding, your training age, all of that improves three years in one. And I think just to bolster that a little bit, um, not to go into too much detail on it, but if you know anyone's club coach, when you ask for feedback, a lot of the time will be to watch as much rugby as you can. And every player that you know has listened to this will have been told that to watch as much as you can and, and to watch your position. So the work that we put in to try and help them understand how to watch critically and watch analytically and try to take insights from it again like dan says training age uh, game understanding rugby iq i think all can be massively increased just based on having a really targeted way to to watch rugby and, and take knowledge in and um, so yeah, in terms of the workshops then this is sort of the third prong of of this approach so this is where we really go into really significant detail on different areas of the game so We'll look at, say, uh, defense under five different headings, attack under five different headings. We'll look at the technical aspects of areas. So we might spend, you know, 45 minutes, 60 minutes on just the tackle um, in an indoor capacity and look, looking at examples of tackles, looking at the core process around it. Uh, what are good ways to remember different parts of the tackle? What are ways to practice it on your own, practice it in groups? And um, in terms of discussion and debate, with again, using the tackle example, We'll look at different still images and videos of tackles and we'll discuss as a group where that tackler might have gone wrong, what he's done correctly, really going into detail on different areas of the game. You can see some examples there as well. We'll talk in, in real detail about the roles of, of defenders in the interior defense. You know, first five defenders, we'll talk about how we find space on the pitch. Um, so we're really looking at, in detail at, at all these different areas of the game. And, and again, all three areas you can see are sort of linked together in terms of increasing the rugby iq and and the the um game understanding of the players that come so it's obviously uh, technical and tactical work like it's mentioned there we look at current trends and laws and approaches so the law is obviously a big one now in particular with and um, that tackle height laws that we're seeing coming in now so we'll discuss the laws of the breakdown set piece tackle and make sure that the players are all up to date on those and um, dan obviously is a law quiz with them as well so that's one of our big focuses we'll talk about current trends so in particular, if, depending on the club you go to, how could you be asked to attack? What could your role look like? How could you be asked to defend? Do you understand the roles within all those different systems and all those different styles? Um, and then finally, obviously, it's, it's the development of the rugby IQ for any of the chosen post-academy careers. So you go back to the, the discussion about being an analyst or becoming an analyst. Um, any really good analyst has very good knowledge of the game. So they understand the intricacies of the game. They understand how, what makes the game tick. So for someone that might come out of uh, the academy and become either a pro player, a semi-pro player, an analyst, a coach, whatever, a, a referee, whatever it might be. All these sessions that we do between the workshops um, and the analysis sessions, they're increasing the rugby understanding of the player, hopefully, um, so that they can and have the, that, that bank of knowledge. Yeah, and the awareness of the player. You know, it's always fascinating to me when players come in for the first time, just see the, the laws, and we'll have a laws test within the first week. And there's yet to be a player getting 50% for laws. And they all come from different backgrounds, but they all think when they walk in there, 
<laughs> they they know the laws inside out, and that's the same. Another exercise will be on their own skill sets. You know, a player that comes in, he thinks he's an eight out of ten passer. But according to us, he might only be a four out of ten passer. And then it's working out that individual plan during the year that the player's perception about himself and the perception that we or the uh, what we see him as comes together by by the end of the year. And I think that's a massive learning curve for for players as well. Super duper. Ladies and gents, you're welcome to Rugby Academy Islands full time and transition year academy programs where we're running through for parents and students who have already applied and, uh, for, and for anybody else who is interested and, and wants to apply what the process is. So we have, uh, I'm joined tonight uh, by Director of Rugby and uh, Rugby Pathways, Dan uh, Fonsale, and by Head of Performance Analysis, the great Joe Walsh. And in the background, you can hear my two dogs barking because they want to be in on the show as well. But there you can't. They're outside. So if you hear that, that's all that is. So we're going to move on now to what happens while they're at the academy and the actual process itself. Dan. Well, when they come, as I say, the, the first part of the academy is basically observation on where the players are at. Uh, the second part of us is coming up with a plan. How can we make them better? And the third, the third part then is once we make them better, how can we how can we help them on their pathway to be successful as a as a pro or semi pro rugby player going from there? Let me just come back into you there. What's um, what's the score with them? Just to remind people that when students come here for the full eight months. The difference between the transition year. The transition year students are already playing for. No, oh, sorry, I probably yeah. didn't explain it well enough there right at the start of the of the program. Um, transition year students is very much Irish based, so it's fifteen to sixteen year old. Uh, in Ireland, you've got uh, six years in in secondary school where you do three years and then after the three years you you have an examination and then you go into what they call fourth year or transition year where it's basically a work experience year with acad uh, academic uh, subjects and there is now exams as well but players go uh, or students go and work you know in a lawyer's firm or they they go and experience skiing or whatever so it's it's really a, a year where they find out what do they want to do before they go into their leaving cert um cycle which is fifth and sixth year then that gives them the points to go to university or to go and study whatever they want so in that transition year it's something that we didn't start with six years ago but as we gone on a lot of people have asked you know can we run a transition year program um, where players can just focus on rugby for that year. And we've had great success with our transition year program, both uh, with girls and and boys going on from spending a year with us and then playing provincial under 18 and Irish under 18s the following year and so on. Because again, compare that to a fourth year student in a local school, the amount of, of training and so on that they get uh, is just a lot more. And then the education part of it as well. As we mentioned before, transition year students, they come out as 16 years of age as a personal trainer. Um, you know. how, do, how do you choose which club an international student will play for for the time of the year? How does that process work? Yeah, the full-time students. That I'm already having conversations with clubs uh, because each club in Ireland is only allowed one foreign player depending in the division the leagues that you play um obviously it depends on the quality of the player the during his application process and and so on but it's also where i had that conversation the first week the players are here with a player explaining them the different leagues and structures within irish rugby and if you just watch the under 20 world cup at the moment and the provincial rugby and so on irish rugby is very strong and and you know, the club system is actually also very strong and well-structured. So um, it's taking the player through that. Where is he going to get the most benefit of playing? It might be for a club that's not as strong, but in the position that he wants to play, he's going to learn a lot by playing for that club. It, it might be that, you know, 
where he's going to get most game time, that he doesn't just become an impact player and so on. So it's really depending from individual to individual. And then also, does clubs already have a foreign player or don't they? Do they need a second row? Do they need a backline player? It's normally with the clubs that I've got a very good relationship with where the clubs also look after all the players' expenses when they're at the club, you know, so like transport, registration, all of that. So there's no extra cost for a player to go and play at a club. That's that's what I try and um, establish. And then the video footage uh, is really important so that we can – uh, that we can have that, that the player can analyze himself, that Joe can help him with that, um, and and that we can move them on uh, after they stint with us. Brilliant. And just before we move on, well spotted, Catherine Brooks uh, and uh, his young Mr. Oscar coming to join I us. Hope Oscar, I hope Oscar is <laughs> not as clever as his mom. <laughs> so, uh, Catherine, I will, uh, there's some Chef's Blend uh, coffee beans on its way to you. I shall contact you with your details and I shall get some off to you as well. But I'm yes, you and Duncan, it's going to cost me a fortune tonight. I hope there's nothing else. I did notice, so there we go. There's no capital I in the Irish. That was the one that was meant to be. I did notice on Joe's three slides, he did, did have a capital L on. But there we go. Well, Done. Well spotted. Moving, moving on briefly. Uh, so after graduating, so they graduate, Dan, and what happens with the trial? We can ask a lot about, you know, how, how does that work as well? Look, for some students, a trial doesn't happen. Uh, you know, as I say, we vary uh, about ability and, and character. You know, no use a player comes to us and he thinks he's going to become a pro player but he doesn't put in the work and so on. That's where that individual sessions come into play. You know, when it's when it's wet and it's uh, and it's cold and so on in in Ireland in November, December, players either need to do it early in the morning or late afternoon. For some players, it's easier to go and lie under a duvet than be outside doing his individual session. That's where I spot about the character, the want of the player. Um, so it's a lot to do with that. And then obviously his playing ability will play a massive part. The other aspect, and this is probably more for, for South Africans, is also the passport. You know, some countries uh, allow uh, people from anywhere to come and play. For other uh, players, it's more, it's more difficult. But we've created a, a big contact base at the moment uh, where everybody's not going to play for Leinster or Munster. Um, but we create opportunities for players to to become uh, a pro or semi-pro player where they get looked after. So, uh, but as I say again, it, it doesn't happen with everybody. Um, but you know, in most cases, the players that that really um, want it will achieve. Brilliant. Okay, the application process. <coughs> I'm going to chat you through this. So. What happens initially is one of a couple of things. Let's just throw this up. So initial application form, background assessments are done. You complete the full-time application form itself. There's additional criteria in there for you to complete your CV uh, for references, both education and rugby. And then you've got your highlights reel and your media. Um, and once all that is done, we then arrange an online interview uh, for the, the student player and the parents and guardians, generally with myself initially and Dan as director of rugby. Um, sometimes it comes the other way around. Sometimes we get a we get a message through and we put them straight into the studio. We have first, but. What happens is generically uh, the stream new streamline processes. Just let me stick that up there. Is you would get this. So let me just start this. So this is what actually happens. You get a Rugby Academy Island full time program overview and uh, and requirements. Uh, it's got a link into the academy. It tells you about the academy and the sort of roles that you could do once you have been through. As we spoke about before, I'm just going to. Just canter through this, just an overview. The program location date, as you know, we're going to Kildara Rugby Club. That's our new home. I'm very excited about that as well for the actual rugby part of things. The students for the first term this year from September to December will be at the Irish National Stud. What a wonderful place until our new accommodation is built. So all of this will be in there. We take you through what life is like in the academy. It gives you a bit of a taster. 
rugby during after the academy again you know be structured while you're uh, an Irish club sorry while you're with us as part of the RFU structure again as Dan has just detailed and at the conclusion your region students could I repeat could be offered a trial commensurate to their experience skill level character and club so all of this is in there the application process is also in this letter that we can send out to you all the light, all the links are live in there directly through, so you don't have to go to anywhere else to get them. So we put all that through as well. And the phase two and the phase three, and then the future engagement bit as well of getting you there and the next steps. So that's, let me just come back to the studio. So that's the first thing you get as well. You will also get this, where we uh, send you out the brochure as well. And we're just literally combining the, the full-time course and the short course as part of the Dan alluded to before the expansion side of what's going on at the moment. We can hardly keep up with the numbers of people we've got in place to do no, it. No, and that's that's just back to to you know the the transition period that we're in at the moment is changing from one venue to another because you know the venue that we were at very gr a great venue, but we actually just got too big. You know they couldn't they couldn't fulfil the accommodation side of it for us anymore and so on so uh that's why the expansion and as everybody know especially in ireland in the building industry to build a new facility is going to take time but first of january is when our new facility will be up and running it's really exciting times i have to say it, it's gone faster an awful lot faster than any of us thought it, it would do and we're still keeping up with it all and then that's really good and finding time to go off to Austria to win competition to get run off that competition. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's all happening. So that's the phase one of the application process, and that's the paperwork you'll get. All the live links are in there. We'll get you into the studio. This is this is our own uh, purpose uh, virtual studio. So we have this for doing internal discussions, and that worked really well with the parents and the students. Then we go on to phase two, <clears throat> the waiver and the, the, the financial. Once Dan and the team have reviewed um, the, uh, the the references, both education and uh, rugby, and they will speak to your referees, um, which generally tends to be the head of coaching or director of rugby at wherever your your, your student, uh, male or female, is currently playing at. Once all that is done and they've had a look at uh, the, um, the the reels that you've sent and everything else, and we're happy and we've had a chat, then you can complete the, the waiver form and the initial uh, financial aspect. So, for again, the phase we're at the stage at the moment, on Monday, for example, I'll be sending out um, an email with the financial information package on that to all of those who... Yeah, and just to say, just to say, everybody that's applied so far, hopefully after tonight we'll... We'll have more applications, but everybody that's applied so far, all the references has been contacted by myself. Uh, some came, as some I knew, some I didn't know. So it was great to catch up with uh, with some old uh, friends, so to speak, again. But it's really good to hear insight from from those references as well on the both the person and the player, and how they. Uh, see the player at the moment so but everybody that's applied so far uh their references and so on have been contacted so this will be the next step for them now so that will happen next week for all those of you who are watching who have already started your process uh, the financial package will go out to you in the thin and emails the detailed lesson documentation and the and how you then pay uh, the the parents the student then pay 50 percent of the overall cost that's the initial uh, payment to go through. And then we go to phase three. Once all of that is done, you'll get a formal letter saying, thanks very much. Yes, you have been allocated a place in the next intake um, of Rugby Academy Island to start in the state. <clears throat> and then from that then, you will then get a series. So in the next 10 weeks now, starting with next Monday with the financials, you'll then get a whole pile of emails on a regular basis from my good self, um, often done mostly for me, and that will cover um, um, updates on uh, nutrition and uh, medical advice visas, kit lists, travel details, and then eventually you end up getting this is when we are in the process of uh, produ reproducing for this year's, and it's got all of the details in. Uh, so the registration, accommodation, nutrition, uh, the medical needs, personal belongings. We already have a WhatsApp group 
for the uh, the parents of those uh, students who are joining us in this September, and that's a very good packing list and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, Catherine had some questions to today, which we'll do. And we are very active in the uh, the WhatsApp group as, as the summer program ones. We have a different WhatsApp group for the parents, for the summer ones. And actually, Dan, we have um, we have uh, a WhatsApp group, don't we, for the full time for the players? Just explain that bit. Yes, once once the players start with us, so that will be done uh, the fourth or the first of September. Uh, but at the moment, we have one for for the parents. So again, all the applicants, parents will be on a WhatsApp group uh, at the moment. Just any transition year student, where we we do where we do separate is Johan Taylor, who's the managing director. Johan will take charge of all transition year students, and then Joe will be the engagement of of the full time students. Brilliant stuff. Here we go. So, so that's the application process. It's very simple. It's very slick. It's not the first rodeo we've been on. Um, it's just sometimes the different parents, different students are at a different stage of the process. So we're just constantly trying to, to juggle that. And, and is that there, yeah, and if there's any questions that they want to ask, you know, just get in touch with us um, via the WhatsApp group or otherwise, you know, our numbers and so on, we're available 24-7. It does, yeah. Actually, twenty four seven three six five chase the sun, uh, <laughs> which is which is which is why I drink some Malbec over night time as well. Uh, there we go. So, contact us now. That's what you need to be doing. Is the is the uh, is the bottom line, and it's as simple as that. If you want your cherub boy or girl, male or female athlete, an aspiring player, to come and to. Uh, I can't I can't express enough genuinely um, about what they are going to learn, what they're going to experience, how life changing it will be for them to come to Ireland for eight months and spend that time here and then go on. It, it is imagine something. imagine uh, you in the country for a month that's going to win the World Cup. <laughs> I, I'm going to get in trouble now with my South African hat on saying that, but that's a huge possibility, you know. The cultural yeah. side, that's the other part probably of that we didn't mention, the cultural side of Ireland, getting yeah. to know Ireland as a country. It is the best rugby nation in the world at the, at the moment, not me saying it, but uh, by statistics. So uh, the coaching, I can honestly say, having been, you know, doing a lot of coach education in different parts, Irish coaching, you'll be coached different in Ireland than what you get in most most other countries. So for a player to develop, uh, there's huge opportunity um, to come to Ireland. Absolutely. Joe, some final thoughts from you. Yeah, well, I think it's more to reiterate what you've said, Joe, the experience um, – from our perspective, I think we think the guys have had a phenomenal time, whether it be through the, the tougher COVID years or when they've had the full experience. I think the closing word for me is, is I've been lucky enough to have some of these guys play in the club teams that I've been involved with. And some of the best feedback that we've gotten from them is the pure enjoyment that they've gotten out of the experience. And that's probably through the balance, really, between the pathway stuff, the, the skill development, the play, rugby development, the education pathways, and then the experiences that they get with their club teams. And um, that sort of break that they get on the weekend to go and play rugby and show what they've learned during the week and the social aspect with the team that they're involved in, you know, making really ultimately anyone that comes is going to leave with 50 new friends or at least acquaintances. So it's the it's the the bonds and the relationships is probably the thing we haven't spoken about tonight is the, the relationship building that the guys go through and, and make you know a lot of friends for life. And, and we can probably all vouch for how many of the guys that have come through that are still really really close friends with with the people that that they played with here or got coached with here so um i think it's something that if i was still playing rugby or a few years ago i would have loved the opportunity to be involved or to spend a year or spend the eight months you know in, in an experience like this yeah, yeah no the friendships i mean there's examples of people going on seven circuit down to chile and then yeah. the chileans that's been part of our program 
they support that nation, not their own nation, because of the friendships that they've built and so on. And that's that's happened all along. So can't can't agree with that more. Brilliant. <clears throat> we hope you've enjoyed tonight. Uh, thank you to Director of Rugby and Head of Play Pathways, Dan Von Sale, and Head of Performance Analysis, uh, Joe Walsh there. Admin at rugbyacademyisland.ie. My personal uh, WhatsApp number is on there as well. And but yes, people do contact us 24 7 365. We don't mind. We don't sleep. We'll sleep when the next eight months is over. So get in touch with us. Uh, it all starts with a simple conversation, and we are always having it. We have the conversations every single day. Don't forget, if there are still a couple of places left for Cork and Kilkenny, Cork for boys. Kilkenny for boys and girls, 5th to the 12th of August, that is in Kilkenny. If you want, then contact us as well for our summer rugby programme weeks. And uh, we wish Dan and Joe and everybody else really, really good uh, for starting on Saturday. Two-week programme at St. Columbus College in Dublin. I'm looking forward to meeting some of the people I've been in contact with that we've never met before. And until then, just remember, this could be you or your child. Defend that! That's what I'm saying.